Hi, my name is Namyung Park. I'm a CSPhD student in Carnegie Mellon University. I'm happy to present my paper, which was done in collaboration with uh, Ryan Uni Ifti Sangsofen, Nazarin, and Christos. In this paper, we address the graph clustering problem. Uh, more specifically, uh, we aim to answer this question. Uh, given a network data set and node features, how can we find the communities of um, similar nodes in an unsupervised manner? In recent years, uh, state-of-the-art clustering performance has been <clears throat> achieved by deep clustering methods in several application domains, including um, image classification. Following this success, graph clustering, or DGC in short, has been receiving increasing attention recently, uh, which aims to learn cluster-friendly representations using deep neural networks for graph clustering. Specifically, DGC provides a graph and, and node features to a deep neural net-based model, which uh, produces uh, node embeddings and cluster assignments as the output. Um, early DGC methods have, um, uh, have taken a two-stage approach where representation learning and clustering are done in isolation. For instance, node embeddings are first learned by graph photoencoders to which a clustering method is applied. Then more accurate clustering results have been obtained by, uh, by another group of methods which uh, jointly optimizes node embeddings um, and cluster assignments. This first table, this table compares uh, major earlier methods where rows correspond to desirable properties for deep graph clustering. In uh, these, these DGC methods, a major challenge lies in how to um, effectively utilize um, available signals uh, uh, from the input data, such as input node features, graph structures, and community structures um, uh, latent in them. Uh, existing methods, however, do not satisfy all of these uh, desirable properties at the same time. Also, um, also to make the most of uh, graph structure and node features, existing methods try the different modeling choices, uh, for instance, in terms of encoder architectures. However, differences among them are relatively uh, small. They mainly perform reconstruction based, uh, reconstruction loss minimization in an uh, autoencoder based framework. And they also employ the clustering objective, which was um, first proposed in one of the earliest methods. So in this paper, we propose a method named uh, CGC, contrastive graph clustering, which is an effective uh, novel deep graph clustering framework based on contrastive learning. Um, as this figure shows over multiple static and temporal data sets, the proposed method consistently outperforms competitors achieving up to 28% higher node clustering accuracy. Um, also in comparison to earlier methods, uh, CGC satisfies all these uh, re uh, requirements and also employs a contrastive learning based objective, which uh, is greatly different from that used in existing methods. Um, I'll first briefly introduce contrastive learning. <clears throat> Here, the figure, this figure shows how contrastive learning optimizes the embeddings of entities. Uh, the main idea is to pull an entity here called an anchor uh, closer to its uh, positive sample in the embedding space, uh, where positive sample, a positive sample is an entity that belongs to the same class as the um, anchor entity, while pushing the anchor away from its negative sample. When there are no labels, uh, the choice of positive and negative samples plays a crucial role in contrastive learning. Uh, for image data, for instance, positive samples are often take, uh, obtained by taking different views of the data. For instance, uh, via data augmentation techniques such as um, color distortion and resizing. And negative samples are often randomly selected from the entire pool of samples. Uh, then given no ground truth node labels, how can we utilize contrastive learning for graph clustering? Our main idea is to utilize the signals of the community structure of uh, real world networks, which have been discovered by earlier studies on uh, networks. The first, uh, so our proposed uh, framework of CGC performs contrastive uh, learning uh, based on uh, uh, by, by carrying out these two steps in an alternating fashion. First, to refine the cluster memberships based on the current node embeddings and then optimize node embeddings such that those from the same cluster get closer to each other while those from different clusters are pushed away from each other. 
Uh, in CGC, therefore, contrastive learning happens in this second step where positive samples of a node are assumed to have been uh, generated by the same cluster as the node of interest, the anchor node. And to that end, we utilize several signals on the community structure of the network obtained from uh, different levels of the input data. Input node features are the first signal that we utilize. Our intuition is that entities in the same community tend to have similar attributes. Therefore, uh, informative node attributes can be used to distinguish those in the same class from those in different classes. And uh, node features are especially helpful for sparse graphs since they can complement uh, scarce relational information. So based on this, we maximize the agreement between node embeddings and um, input node features. Here, this yellow circle denotes uh, the anchor node and these rectangles uh, denote node features or node embeddings. Um, this yellow <clears throat> rectangle denotes the embedding of uh, the anchor node here, shown here, uh, which is obtained by applying a graph neural net uh, encoder, which I will describe later. Uh, for the anchor node, its input node feature, shown here, is taken to be its positive sample. And more specifically, uh, this anchor node's embedding uh, is compared with the linearly transformed uh, input node features uh, here shown as this uh, orange box. Uh, then as negative samples, we randomly select our nodes from the graph and uh, take their linearly transformed um, input features shown here as these blue boxes to be the negative samples. Uh, then with these positive and negative pairs, we can perform contrastive learning by this uh, optimization, by optimizing this loss function. And network homophily is the next signal that we use. Uh, in real world graphs, the similar nodes are more likely to attach to each other than the similar ones. And therefore a node is more likely to belong to the same cluster as its neighbors than some randomly chosen nodes. So based on this observation, we maximize the agreement between uh, the embeddings of neighboring nodes. To optimize in consideration of <clears throat> network homophily, uh, we construct a positive sample uh, for the anchor node here. Uh, by randomly sampling from the neighbors of the anchor node. In particular, we also consider the phenomenon of higher order label homogeneity, uh, which indicates the tendency of nodes participating in some higher order structures like <clears throat> triangles to share the same label. To that end, we enable assigning different probabilities to neighbors based on their participation in uh, these higher order structures. Then after selecting a positive sample node from the neighbor, uh, uh, it's embedding shown here as this orange box is taken to be the positive sample. Then to construct negative samples, we uh, design a network corruption function here shown at the bottom right. Uh, it constructs a negative network from the, uh, from the original graph and input node features by randomly shuffling uh, the, the input node features shown here while preserving the graph structure. Then our negative nodes and their features are randomly selected uh, from the from the corrupted graph and their embeddings are taken to be the negative sample. Again, with these positive and negative pairs, we can uh, perform contrastive learning based on network homophily using this loss function. Uh, the, the above loss terms, the, for, uh, the previous two loss terms contrast an entity with other individual entities and their input features, thereby learning communities at a relatively low level. Here, we consider communities at a higher level than before. Uh, it's well known that uh, real world networks possess um, hierarchical community structures. So based on this observation, we model this phenomenon uh, by contrasting entities uh, with hierarchical communities at different uh, granularities. In this figure, these boxes uh, denote node embeddings. Um, in, in, in CGC, we represent communities as a cluster centroid vector in the same uh, latent space as the entities so that the distance between an entity and these cluster centroids uh, reflect the entity's uh, degree of participation in, uh, in different communities. In particular, we consider how the same nodes can be grouped into different number of clusters. For instance, here, these node embeddings are grouped into two clusters and the same nodes can be grouped into four more fine-grained clusters. Uh, then for contrastive learning using this signal on hierarchical community, we take the centroid of the cluster uh, that the anchor node U belongs to. So this is the anchor node, and this is the, uh, the, the centroid of the cluster that this anchor node belongs to. We take this uh, 
uh, this cluster centroid to be the positive sample and negative samples are randomly selected from among the other remaining cluster centroids. So note that these anchor nodes are contra contrasted uh, not with other individual nodes, but with, uh, with cluster uh, centroid vectors. Uh, then the next set of positive and negative pairs can be constructed by considering another level of clustering. Uh, for instance, uh, the, this example shown at the bottom. Uh, given these uh, sets of positive and negative pairs, contrastive uh, learning based on hierarchical communities can be performed by this loss function. Now we extend the problem setting to time evolving graphs where new events continuously arrive over time. As, um, as entities uh, interact with each other, their characteristics and their relations with others may change over time. And such temporal changes uh, normally occur smoothly. Therefore, edges of a node observed across uh, a range of time spans can provide related temporal views on of the node in terms of uh, its connectivity pattern. So to utilize this temporal uh, smoothness, we maximize the agreement between uh, the current embeddings of a node and its previous embeddings. Uh, this figure shows graph snapshots observed at two different time steps, j and j minus uh, one. We're given, uh, given the anchor node u at, the, at time j, then we take its embedding at the previous time step j minus one to be its, uh, to be its positive sample here shown as this uh, orange circle. And then to obtain negative samples, we apply uh, the same network corruption function I used previously to the graph uh, that were observed before the current time step and, uh, and, and uh, input node features. Then uh, node embeddings from uh, these corrupted networks, uh, which correspond to the um, anchor node U are taken as the negative samples of the anchor node. Um, again, with, once we have these positive and negative pairs, contrastive learning in consideration of temporal evolution can be performed using this loss function. Um, this algorithm shows how uh, CGC operates by, uh, by repeatedly performing uh, three uh, simple steps. Uh, first, given the current model parameters, we produce node embeddings H, uh, where we adopted a widely used graph neural networks with a mean aggregator as the node encoder. Then we apply clustering algorithms such as k-means to the current node embeddings and obtain refined clusters and cluster memberships. Uh, then based on the updated cluster memberships and centroids, CGC computes the multi-level contrastive loss uh, introduced earlier uh, and optimizes model parameters. Uh, when new events uh, occur over time, then we can extend these algorithms such that it performs these steps repeatedly as new graph snapshots arrive using this extended multi-level contrastive loss. Um, in experiment, we answer these two research questions. First, how accurately can CGC perform node clustering? Um, and second, how useful is the cluster membership uh, learned by the method in temporal link prediction? Uh, so these are node clustering results over four static baselines where we are showing two widely used metrics on clustering quality. Our proposed CGC consistently outperforms all static baselines you know, shown here, uh, achieving up to 28% higher clustering accuracy than the uh, <clears throat> best deep graph clustering baseline. We extended the experiment to temporal graph setting. Um, here, we are, we are reporting the clustering performance averaged over multiple time steps. For static baselines, we perform the clustering using all cumulative graph, graph snapshots by default. And we also report the result obtained with using just the latest snapshot at each time. Um, again, overall, the proposed method outperforms both uh, static and temporal uh, baselines, achieving nearly 400% higher NMI than the best baseline. Um, this figure shows how, accurate, how accuracy and NMI of these methods change over time. The baseline's performance shows some upward trend, but their improvement is not significant. On the other hand, the CGC's performance uh, remarkably uh, improves over time. Uh, in temporal link prediction experiment, we estimated whether two nodes I and J will be connected at time T plus one, given their cluster memberships at the previous time step. The motivation of this uh, evaluation is that nodes in the same cluster tend to form a link between them. Uh, in experiments involving uh, three, uh, three data sets, the proposed CGC uh, performs better than both the static and temporal baselines consistently, achieving up to 29% higher link prediction performance. And uh, these figures show how the performance changes over time 
where CGC uh, wins for most time steps. Um, so to summarize, um, in this work, we presented uh, CGC, a, con a novel contrastive graph clustering framework and showed that uh, CGC consistently achieves the best clustering performance on multiple static and temporal uh, graphs. Um, Many thanks for your presentation. Are there questions from the audience? For the moment being, I don't see any uh, questions in the chat. Maybe I have a, uh, let me ask a first question, please. So when you talk about the temporal prediction, which is quite interesting uh, for me, mm -hmm. uh, running the temporal web analytics workshop uh, of this conference, so what is the level of temporal granularity? This is monthly, uh, as you indicate. Um, this is um, monthly. Yeah, that actually depends on the data set. Um, so um, so the, the snapshot interval for one of the data set was uh, 12 hours, and the longest was one year for DBLP. And uh, for other two data temporal data sets, like four square data sets, the snapshot interval was uh, 30 days. So yeah, okay. it rained, yeah. And, and how many instances do you have for each? Uh, so how many, uh, what, how long was the span? So how many instances did you compare or analyze? How many instances? Uh, I mean, if, if you say now you have 12 hours, 12 hours, 12 hours, so did you take now an interval of a week or how long did you analyze this? And so how many different uh, intervals did you predict? Um, so the prediction is made only for the uh, for the latest interval, given the community, sorry, okay. given the cluster memberships that were learned using all previous uh, yeah, okay. edges. Okay, so okay. Yeah. So there's, yeah, only, and, there's only one prediction then, I see. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, it's not, it's not really predicting forward into the future. We're just using this task for evaluating the clustering quality because we don't have ground truth labels for some of the data sets. I understand, but uh, one could have done uh, more predictions to the to the past, in the past. More predictions. In the past, in, in but, uh, you could have basically blinded some of the information and then do more predictions in the past. Uh, OK. I'm not um, yeah, I'm not sure if I understood correctly. <laughs> Uh, I mean, I mean, you could have gone uh, well, not to the, not to the. Uh, uh, I mean, uh, one need, would need to see the data set more clearly. We can take we can take it off then. It's not uh, it's not okay. A big, okay. okay. Many thanks again. So uh, thank you. Thank you very much.